Hey everyone, welcome back to Miniature Painting 101, a series of videos where we teach you all about painting miniatures from start to finish and everything in between, including camouflage. And this week, we'll be continuing on our camouflage streak, painting woodland slash forest camouflage on a tank. It was asked for by a specific person after the last video, so I figured might as well make it. So we'll be painting the other side of this paint blade, just a quarter of it, with a woodland slash forest camo pattern using a similar color scheme as last week, but we'll be adding some more colors in. So uh, we'll start off, of course, with Bane Blade Brown once again, and I thinned it down some Lamy Medium, and I'm gonna apply it nice and uh, thin over the uh, the miniature. As you can see, at this time, I think my white balance was just slightly off, and it came off lighter, but you'll see when it darkens, it's Bane Blade Brown. But uh, yeah, so the first step is just to just decide where the brown is gonna be on the miniature. And so what I like to do is just do random patches of brown around it, uh, leaving plenty of gaps in between them. And we're gonna be filling those gaps with three other colors to create the woodland appearance for camo. And so as you see, I'm just continuing along all the surfaces, doing random patterns of different sizes and shapes just try to keep them nice and round and I can of course clean them up later with the other colors and as always we're going to go from from lightest color to darkest color because it's easy to clean up as you go and don't need to worry about you know ruining each step so as you can see just deciding where the, the brown is going to be and uh, when it was completely dry I then added some Ushabti Bone so that was a 1-1 mix of Ushabti Bone and Painblade Brown into a good light dry brush as I did in last week's video and what this does once again is it brings some texture to these areas so it gives them an, that older worn appearance on a tank and plus it also just adds a little more color and hides the brush strokes in case you made a couple mistakes I did do two thin coats of the uh, Bane Blade Brown with the Lamia Medium. That way it's nice and solid foundation for the color without showing any, uh, I basically didn't want to show any brush strokes to begin with, right? So now we're gonna add a new color, Chestnut Brown into the mix. And by Chestnut Brown, I mean I'm just adding to Chestnut Brown from the dropper bottle to my palette and putting it on my brush for my wet palette. And just first, once again, I'm going to um, draw the outlines of the pattern. Now for the next few colors, we're gonna do thin bands of, of wavy lines basically, right? They're not gonna be as, as, as large and round as the previous step. We're going to intentionally go around the browns. Uh, not all of them, but just choose which area, just about half of the, of the area of the previous step. We're gonna go around them with the chestnut brown. And the key is two things. Number one, keep your lines nice and wavy and thin. Second thing is we're going to intentionally overlap slightly with the previous step for two reasons. Number one, you don't want to have any primer uh, in between your lines, right? You don't want that to show. Number two, we're going to use each step to clean up the previous one. So as you can see right now, I'm cutting it in and uh, I'm, I'm making sure that the lines are nice and smooth and round on the previous step by intentionally overlapping them slightly with the chestnut brown. And since the brown is, this chestnut brown is significantly darker than the Bane Blade brown, we can get away with this. And that's what we're gonna do, and that's why we start off with the lightest color possible and work our way towards the darkest colors, because we can clean up as we go. So as you can see right now, I'm just wrapping it around the tank as I normally do with my, pre with my um, as I did in the previous tutorial. And uh, I'm just making sure to get the chestnut brown around about half, this is about half the, the parts of the Bane Blade brown ones. And then we'll, we'll fill in the rest with either greens or a black or slightly off black, technically. Right now the keys just get a random pattern of thinner, curvy brown lines. And that's how I like to do my woodland or forest camo. As you can see, it's a really nice thin paint. I didn't need to use any Lamia Medium on this one because it was a Reaper paint, and Reaper paints are by definition much thinner than GW paints. And then I added some Ushapti Bone. So it's about a one-on-one -on -one mix of Ushapti Bone and Chestnut Brown, and I just did a light dry brush just to give it once again some texture and some variation over the, the rivets and the, uh, the edges. So now we have two colors down. Let's now start with the green. So now the green, I'm intentionally going to use a lot more green than I did the previous Chestnut Brown. And once again, we're just going to start with our outlines of our areas, and we're gonna use the green to clean up the previous steps to keep the waves nice and smooth and round and wavy. 
So as you can see, now Calibrand Green is a thin paint to begin with, and I thinned it down even more with only I made medium, so I did two thin coats of Calibrand Green over these green areas. That way it's a nice solid green foundation before proceeding to any dry brushing in the next step. But right now I'm just using my Calibrand Green to uh, paint over most of the gray areas. I'm gonna leave some gray areas left for the next step but most of these gray areas that you see right now will be filled in with Caliban Green. I really want green to be one of the, the primary colors that you see when this model. I, I want it to be one of the, the, the more represented colors on this part, for this camo pattern. So right now we have two browns. And so as you can see, what I'm doing right now is once again, just creating my outline, using the green to smooth out the previous brown steps, keep it nice and wavy, and then uh, filling it in as I go. That's basically it for the uh, the greens. As you can see, I'm just gonna go around most of the previous steps, the chestnut brown and the pain blade brown, and then fill it in, bend it over the surfaces accordingly, and fill it in. And here's what the model looks like, as you can see, after it. So now we're gonna add some warpstone glow to the mix. And I'm gonna use about a, Let's say a three to two combination. So two parts Caliban green, three parts Warpstone glow, which will create more of a forest green. And I'm gonna, once again, do a light dry brush over the green areas, pick up on the ray surfaces, the rivets and the edges, just give it that texture, hide some brush strokes in case you actually made a mistake and uh, give it more of a forest green color. And as you can see right now, there's not that much gray left on the model. And we're gonna fill that in with gray liner, which is an off black. Feel free to use a black if you don't have a gray liner. But um, now I'm just gonna do a quick light dry brush over these surfaces, as you can see here. Just doing a light dry brush. Keep me nice and thin. With that. So now we're going to use our final color, which is, in this case is gray liner, a dark matte gray from Reaper. But uh, if you have a, you don't have that, use, feel free to use a black. I just use, like to use an off black. And once again, I'm going to use this color to fill in all the rest of the grays and to clean up the lines around. So keep it smooth and make sure to use this step to clean up all of the lines around them and make sure they're all nice and smooth to begin. So we have nice round curves in all these lines. That's all I'm doing. So I'm going to take, for this step, I'm going to use a bit thinner of a brush. I'm using a detail brush because I'm going to use very thin bands of this off black to just kind of clean up the rest of the model and, uh, and the pattern. And that way it just brings a little bit of darkness into the pattern as well. But it's a, it's a good camo woodland pattern. And of course, once again, I'm expanding slightly beyond the gray, as you can see, just to clean up all the colors around it and create that random appearance of the pattern. And I continued that around the entire tank. And that's about it. So here's what the tank, the quarter looks like when it's completely done. And that is my woodland forest camo pattern. As you can see, it appears just random, but it has a nice camo pattern to it just by doing the bends. And the key is to start with the lightest color, work your way towards the darkest, and use each step to clean up the previous one as you go. So that way you have nice, clean, smooth lines in the end, and you have a nice forest woodland camo pattern. So as always, Thank you so much for watching this episode of Miniature Painting 101. I really hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for next week's episode, part 131, which is just around the corner. But if you don't want to wait for next week, check out the warp. Click on the link below for a free 14-day trial to my premium YouTube channel. We're not only going to see the next six months worth of Miniature Painting 101 episodes for anyone else, you get to see over 100 start to finish painting tutorials, battle reports, face-off episodes, an Airbrush 101 series, a Q&J series, just tons of content. I know you're going to love it. Go check out the warp. Stay tuned for more videos. Until next time, this is Jay saying. Happy painting, everyone.